Should you buy the Garmin Catalyst? Yes, yes you should. Today, we're gonna to review the Garmin Catalyst. up until now I'm not ex I'm not extremely happy with it um, and I want something a bit more you know pro so I've been looking at sort of race logic and aim and then and then this popped up this Garmin catalyst on my Facebook feed of all places you know Facebook has its targeted ads it's targeted me and all of a sudden Garmin they have a motorsport device like what that's not a name that you associate with motorsports at all zero history but that's actually good in a way or it can be good that's how disruption starts in a marketplace if you think about it that's how Apple got into the phone business they never made a phone before um, they took a whole fresh approach it's, a, it's that fresh set of eyes to a problem or to a market uh, or to the opportunity and, and Garmin have done the same thing how can we apply our know-how to a new market. Awesome, let's do motorsports. Why not, fantastic. So that I think can be really refreshing. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna put it through its paces. Um, firstly, I wanna talk just a bit about the approach that they've taken here, you know, this, this fresh set of eyes. Because they've taken a different approach completely to competitors in the market and, and this, this has put people off a little bit myself included when they've looked at you know what when people look at what one of these devices normally is it's well it's a lap timer you know it tells you what your lap time is um, there may or may not be a camera depending on how much you're willing to spend um, and then you've got to have all these inputs, such as you know can 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 bus data, etc. And then you you take all that, and then you spend hours analysing it to try and work out where you can go, how you can go faster. And that in itself, trust me, is a bit of an art just to be able to do that. Um, it's it's not it's not easy. Um, it's something you have to learn. It's a skill you need to acquire to be able to interpret this data that your device spits out and then use it to make you go faster. Because just looking out, it's one thing, great, fantastic, got some data here, great. What does that tell me? I was faster on this lap, I was slower on this lap, why? Why was I faster on this lap? How can I then use other elements in this lap to make me go far, help me go faster overall? You've got to do all that manually. Garmin's approach here is, I'll do that for you. So here, you don't export the data. You've got this big screen thing, you do all the analysis on it, it does the analysis for you. It gives you these recommendations. You use a camera to help with that. It uh, stitches your best lap together to show you, hey, here is, your, here is your best lap. And it's all based on what you've done. And it has some intelligence around how it does that. So I love that. It's, it's all focused around making you faster. I think that's fantastic. The other thing that's really disruptive, I think, is the, the coach. There's a guy that talks to you in your ear that gives you feedback on when you've done particularly well on a corner um, and, and can coach you. Now, I have heard that there are products out there that can do that as an add-on to your existing telemetry device, but this one comes with it built in. 
no no extra cost necessary so that's really exciting I can't wait to test that out can't wait can't wait to, to see this whole recommendations and how well that works because that's the ultimate test can it make me faster can in a really short period of time so I'm going to go out and do some laps or do a session and then I don't have to go and download it and plug it into a laptop and do anything like that straight away I can look at it it gives me some recommendations can I then use that to improve in the next session like that's that's the ultimate test of whether or not this this device is worth your money so let's put it through its paces I'm going to arrive at the racetrack in about 10 minutes I'll get ready then I've got to set this device up get it in the car get it all ready and then we'll go out and do some laps let's do it all right we're here at city motorsport park where we're waiting to be allowed into the the garages so we're here at the dummy grid waiting for another track day to finish so i thought it's a good time to actually take a look at the device and get it all set up so let's do that let's have a look at how it attaches to the car so this is the mount it's really sturdy super impressed with that it's got a, a, a lot of adjustability um, the suction mount is like amazing um, I don't like all the cables like so you have to have it plugged in it won't work if the power was not plugged in um, and also if the camera is not plugged in so this this cable here is for the camera and I've got the camera mounted here behind uh, the rear view mirror and this is the device so in the device Am I doing that right? Am I upside down? Upside down. Like that. That's the device. So it's, it's, it's massive. So I had, I had to mount it up high because I didn't want it blocking my field of view. So where to put it was a bit of a struggle. You can't put it down low like you would a GPS or something like that. Um, it's kind of got to be, yeah, you need your full field of vision when you're on track. So I've mounted it up high, kind of, so if I'm looking out here, it's like that. So you shouldn't actually be looking at it as you're driving anyway. So it's over there. Um, let's set it up. So I think it needs power. So let's, let's just start the engine. So agree. I'm going to set up my own profile here. How do I do that? Settings. Here we go, add profile. Andrew. Units of metric, record audio, yes, audible prompts. Race coach, advanced race coach. Yep, guess I'm awesome. That's good, safe changes, yes. So we're using that driver, it's not my car, add a car. VW Golf GTI How do I do? Year 2016 Done Done Go to Wi-Fi for weather, let's get tracks New Motorsport Park, we're doing the Grand Prix circuit. 
then I just go drive. Sydney Motorsport Park, Grand Prix Circuit. Dry track. Let's check alignment of the camera. And then... Uh, And that's it. Once you do that, um, you're meant to be good to go. So super easy to set up, actually. Like that took, what, two minutes to set it up. Let's do it. So we've just finished up at City Motorsport Park. I've done a couple of sessions now with the Garmin unit. Let's look at actually what it can do. Let's actually look at the uh, review capabilities. Okay, so I actually got kicked out of the racetrack last night. They turned the lights off so I couldn't continue the evaluation. Good thing about that is that it's given me a little bit more time just to look the analysis part of the device a little bit further. So that's what I'd like to take you through now, just an example of how we can use the data that the device has captured to actually make improvements in our, in our lap time. So let's take a look. So we've finished our sessions. We click on the review button. So that was um, the whole session yesterday. So we click on that, Sydney Motorsport Park. 17 laps. These are the three sessions that I did. So let's take a look at the first session. Six laps. So here it's got, I can look at my opportunities, my laps or my segments. And it's got some, um, some broad sort of information here. Best lap, optimal lap, where there's a fair bit of variance there. So it was over a second in me just not stitching together uh, the best parts of the lap that I did actually do. So let's take a look at the laps first. Shows me again my optimal, highlighted in green, what my best lap was. Reasonably good consistency, but it doesn't really tell me a lot extra. I mean, any lap timing device is gonna tell me exactly the same thing. That's its job, is to accurately record my lap times, and that's not the strength of this unit. I can pay, I can do that with Harry. So let's look at the opportunities. So it says here to review the tabs first before looking at the specific segment information. So we can see here, these are these tabs here, um, overview, braking, apex and speed. It breaks down the opportunities into those different sections, which is really cool. Now, where this opportunity is, is turn one on this track and turn one's important because it follows a large straight and I'll be honest it's actually a pretty scary corner. A full aero car can, can do insane speeds around this corner like you know 250 plus kilometers per hour. Um, I don't even hit 250 on the straight um, but I, I, I break as we can see here by this trace acceleration and deceleration, I, I break before the corner. So it's telling me that I can gain 0.3 of a second by, by doing something different. So let's see what it's actually advising. I mean, it's telling me here my optimal line is three meters shorter than my average line. Okay, it's not telling me a lot. We can see from the speed trace here that there's a difference. 
and we can see from the acceleration and deceleration there's a difference there um, between when I did on average break versus where my, my optimal breaking point is. So let's go through the tabs to get a bit more detail. Let's look at braking. Really cool heat map here showing me where my braking uh, is at its strongest, which is at the start, just before the corner, showing me the G-forces here as well. So bang, hard on the brakes, releasing, going around the corner, and then I'm not getting back on the gas till sort of corner, the, you know, till after the till after the apex. Nothing abnormal there. I can look at these screenshots as well, which, if I'm honest, doesn't tell me a lot, because I know for a fact, I'm not sure if it's telling me this is where I'm braking or not, but I know for sure I brake after, that's the 100 metre mark. Um, but it could be that I'm lifting before then. I know I'm on the brakes after that, but this could be telling me that I'm lifting before then because there's a big difference here between my average and my optimal. So that's interesting. We can see here from the speed trace, and I'll look at that more when we get to the speed tab. So for braking, basically it's saying I should be braking later than the average. Let's look at apex. Now, it's telling me that I achieved my fastest time when I apexed earlier, which is interesting because general consensus for this corner is, because this corner, because you're doing such high speeds down the straight, your brain tells you to kind of get off the gas and kind of apex earlier. That's like the safe line. But generally, um, apexing later should be faster. But... You know, I wasn't really going balls to the wall um, on these laps. The car's got a new setup and I couldn't push it really as hard um, as I will eventually be able to. So this kind of tracks. It makes sense based on what I was doing because it can only make recommendations based on what I've done, which means that you do may perhaps need to experiment and try different lines, um, different apex strategies to see what works and it'll tell you what's better. So it's telling me that I was fastest when I apexed earlier. Let's look at speed. And I reckon this is the real telling piece of information here. Because I think that this time is all saved by this uh, corner entry speed difference, which is a combination of braking a bit later um, but not braking as much. So I'm not shedding off enough, as much speed. Because you can see after that point here, so here I go through the corner, maintaining more speed into the corner. My exit speed is actually the same. So my minimum speed through the corner is pretty similar and my exit speed at the corner is also the same. And we can see that when we go back to the overview and then into view segment. This has more detailed statistics on position speed and acceleration and deceleration. So let's go to speed again. So we can see here, it's the big delta is in this entry speed. So I need to maintain more speed going into the corner to, to, get, this, to get this time because my minimum speed is the same and turn exit speed is also the same. So I'm, only, I'm gaining that time by that corner entry speed. That, that's really good information and there's some g-force not much difference there my max deceleration is is pretty much the same max acceleration pretty much the same deceleration time that's interesting and is not what i would have expected it to be it's saying that when i decelerated for longer i was faster so that's my optimal all right, and here we can actually watch the stitch together lap. So press play here. And this is the lap. It breaks it up into different segments, but it's taking all the best bits 
of the track that I completed, stitching them together into one. And you'll see where it does it here. See that? How it changed a little bit? It, it's stitched together two different bits. So I can now watch this back and, and, and literally teach myself how to drive. The one thing that is a bit disappointing though is that there's no, there's no data overlay. So I'd like to know where my braking points are. Um, and it's not, it's not giving me that, which is disappointing. If it had the, if it had like the G-force meter, like the accelerometer on there, that would be really, really useful. Or if it, if it even had sound, okay, it's missing video there for some reason. If it even had sound, um, then I could hear when I'm lifting off the gas, which I, which would presumably follow by braking. But it's not giving me that. Let's switch next segment. No, still not. Look at that, it's missing video. So that isn't very cool. The last couple of segments, the video is not there for whatever reason. So that is the optimal video feature. And by going through these segments, so you can so you can go through the segments and look at the statistics for each of them as well. And then you can go into the tabs for position, speed, acceleration, deceleration. So you can basically learn how to do each corner. Super cool. Okay, so the ultimate question, should you buy the Garmin Catalyst? Yes, yes you should. And here's why. I think there's no other device out there right now that will gain you time on the racetrack as easily as this. And at the end of the day, that's why we buy these. We buy these to help us improve. And I think this, I know this device will do that for the majority of people better than any other, any other device. I think there's probably, when you're really, really at the top and you're looking for like tents, maybe that's when your more hardcore data acquisition devices uh, with CAN inputs are probably going to get you that ultimate, ultimate result. But I reckon for 9 out of 10 people, this device will be better. I really think it's a game changer. Um, I think Garmin have done a fantastic job for, a, for their first entry into this market. I think the only thing that's going to let them down here or where they'll struggle is the price point's a little high. So it's like $1,600, I think, here in Australia, which sounds like a lot of money when people think about it. Oh, it's a lap timer. Wow, that's an expensive lap timer. When you consider everything that it does, though, I think it's a bargain. I said it earlier. For AIM, with a camera, it's two grand plus. For VBOX, it's like two, starting at like two and a half minimum. Um, $1,600 doesn't look too bad. Plus, you get the driving coach in your ear, which works really, really well. It's actually one of my favorite attributes of this system. The, the driving coach is just fantastic. Getting that immediate feedback, telling you that you've done a corner well or that you've done what it suggested straight away, there's, there's really no substitute for that. So yes, I do recommend the Garmin Catalyst. It's a great device. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time. Thanks for watching.